Hello guys and welcome back to another super efficient build guide and this week we're following on from the previous two weeks builds of encased industrial beams and modular frames to produce two heavy modular frames per minute. So if you haven't checked them out I'll leave a link to them in the top right hand corner now and if you find this video helpful then please do drop a thumbs up and if you want to see more obviously don't forget to subscribe. Anyway let's get into it. So first things first for this build you will need the five modular frames we covered in last week's video, 10 of the 15 encased industrial beams, I'll show you how to load balance that shortly and then you will need a total of 45 coal and a further 95 iron ore. On top of the previous build, you will need enough resources to build a manufacturer, 11 more constructors, as well as two smelters and a foundry, and the necessary products for the belts, splitters, mergers, and any containers you'd like to use. Do note, for one of the conveyor lines, we will be using the Mark III conveyor, and the active structures in this build can fit comfortably within a 6x12 grid. This part of the build will consume no more than a total of 119 megawatts, however the whole build, including the modular frame factory and encased industrial beams, will cost 420 megawatts, but that it does exclude the steel foundry used to produce the encased industrial beams. So let's get building. Part 1 covers the smelters. The first thing we shall place is a splitter in the center of the first row in the sixth column. Make sure you have outputs flowing ahead and to the left. Now place a smelter directly in front of the splitter as well as a second smelter in the same position in the fourth column. Both of these smelters should be set to iron ingots. The one on the left is set to 67% clock speed or set to produce 20 iron ingots per minute. The smelter to the right is set to 100% clock speed. On the manifold feeding the smelters you will need to ensure that you have 50 iron ore on the line per minute. In front of the smelters, spanning the second and third foundations, place a splitter. Part 2, we shall cover the rod constructors. So directly in front of the splitters, place a constructor. You will want to also place two more constructors directly to the left of each of these constructors. You should now have four constructors in a row and set all of these to iron rods and connect the conveyors up. The two constructors on the left hand side should also be set to 67% clock speed so that these four constructors will produce a total of 50 iron rods per minute. In front of the left constructor of each smelter, place a merger flowing forwards and directly in front of each merger, place another splitter and make sure these are connected by a belt. Part 3 is going to be covering the screw constructors. At this point, we will need 5 constructors in a row. Place them in line, starting directly in front of the splitters. The splitter on the right hand side should be connected to three constructors and the splitter on the left connected to two constructors. Set all constructors to screws and they will be running at 100% clock speed. At this point we shall merge all screw lines together into one Mark III conveyor manifold flowing to the right with the final merger in the line flowing forwards. Part 4 covers the steel foundry. We shall now work on the steel pipe section of the factory. First place a single foundry spanning across the foundation in the second row of the first column. Set this to steel and you will need an input line of 45 iron and a second one of 45 coal. We shall now run a straight conveyor line from the steel foundry output to the border of the 7th and 8th row of the foundations in the first column. Part 5 covers the steel pipe constructors. 
Next, we shall place the two steel pipe constructors. The first constructor should be placed horizontally, spanning the fourth column directly in front of the mergers in the front of the screw line. Place the second steel pipe constructor horizontally above the first, and now we shall create a two to one load balancer. Place a merger flowing into the first constructor, then diagonally from this place a splitter. We shall connect the front and right hand side output of the splitter to the merger, like you can see here, and we shall run the left hand output to the second constructor. Now connect the steel ingot line with the splitter. The first constructor will run at 100% clock speed, producing steel pipes, and the second constructor will produce steel pipes at 50% clock speed. Afterwards, merge these two constructors together in front of the second constructor. Part 6 covers the manufacturer, and at this point we shall place the manufacturer. So place a merger directly against the far edge of the grid, in the middle of the penultimate column. From here, place the manufacturer directly next to the merger, and you can then delete the merger afterwards. You can now connect the steel pipes and screws in whichever way you wish to the manufacturer. Here I use the two middle lines as I will have the encased industrial beams and modular frames from different factories coming at the side. For part 7 I will just briefly cover the modular frames and at this point we shall move the modular frames from our last build straight to the manufacturer in the right hand input. Note we need to do nothing to the modular frame line as following on from last week's guide we will be producing the necessary five modular frames per minute. For part eight we'll go over the encased industrial beams. We shall also bring those 15 encased industrial beams to this factory. Note that we only need 10 encased industrial beams per minute so I suggest using the two to one split that we did earlier for the steel pipes with two of the three splitter lines merging the beams into one line for the manufacturer and a single line feeding a container the remaining five beams per minute. Don't worry at this point about the five beams per minute, you're probably going to be using those five beams extra for things like Mark IV belts so it's always good to have a few extra stored. At this point, we have actually completed the build and you can have the manufacturer leading to a container or elsewhere in your factory, passively producing a total of two heavy modular frames per minute. Anyway guys, if you did enjoy the video or found it helpful, then please do drop a thumbs up and let me know what you thought of this build in the description below and let me know what kind of layout you'd like me to work towards next. And if you do enjoy these videos, why not subscribe if you haven't already? Anyway guys, we're going to leave it there. Thank you so much for watching and as always, until next time, ciao for now.